fiscal year 2023-2024. Who gets to start? Roll call. Roll call. All right. Baumas. Thorstensen. Here. Woodside. Here. Ross. Here. Garner. O'Brien. Present. Four present, two absent. Sure. So file similar format to prior years. Brian will get us started with a high level overview, go through the departments, uh, then we'll bounce back to the remaining funds and capital. We'll go to about 640. If we're not done by then. Break for 20 minutes. Hold the regular village board meeting and then pick up where we left off at the end. So with that, Brian will get us started. All right. Thank you, Pat. Uh, this chart shows the village's financial planning and reporting process. Uh, starts with the multi-year financial forecast, which is done in November, December. That's an internal process again this year. Um, that's followed by a uh, multi-year capital plan, which was presented January 9th. Uh, that's followed by January and February, a series of departmental meetings for personnel and operating budgets. Um, then a draft documents prepared, one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings with the mayor and trustees take place uh, near the end of February. And that brings us to tonight, which is the first uh, budget workshop. We also reserved the second meeting in March in case we need a second one. Uh, public hearing and approval will be on the April 10th agenda. It gives us a meeting, an extra meeting there, just in case something, something goes wrong. Um, then the fiscal year begins May 1st. Uh, budget document is broken down into 11 sections. Tonight we'll focus on just a few of them. Uh, the budget message, which is kind of the broadest overview um, from the mayor to the community. Uh, section 5, which is all funds combined. Section 6, which gets us into the general fund and specific departments, uh, departments and divisions, I should say. We'll touch a little bit on Section 7, which is capital at the end, uh, basically just reviewing what we talked about at the, at the capital um, the multi-year capital plan meeting, uh, not a whole lot has changed with that uh, since then, so we'll hit that quick. This chart shows individual funds in green, associated departments, uh, individual funds in green and associated departments and divisions in yellow. Uh, total budget, expenditure budget, 92.5 million, 49.1 of that is the general fund. Uh, still carrying the 17.2 million capital plan uh, that we had talked about already. The budget was prepared without a property tax. Uh, as you know, the village's debt burden is extremely low, actually the lowest of any community over 25,000 in Illinois. Um, water rates, we include a water and sewer rate increase of 3.5%. That's the first one in three years. Uh, also included a senior discount, uh, which we'll talk about more in more detail here at the end of the presentation. Personnel increase by four and a quarter FTEs. Uh, included pension contributions. Both pension contributions for police and fire actually went down this year. We increased them by 3%, so we are significantly overfunding. Uh, we'll talk about that again when we get to that, get to that portion. Uh, included the Small Business Capital Grant for the third year, uh, the Economic Development Reserve as well. Uh, general Fund Fund Balance Policy, we'll talk about a, a change that staff is proposing there, and also a proposed transfer of surplus from the fiscal year 22. Uh, obviously, the strategic plan is updated in the document. Um, and then we have some planned drawdowns that we'll talk about here in a second. So before we get into uh, getting too far into the numbers, it's important to find out or know where we expect to finish this year. Uh, just a couple items of note here. This chart shows projected revenues and expenditures in any surplus or deficit. Um, general fund is expected to finish the year with a, a deficit, or sorry, a surplus of 3.8 million. Uh, and then so fairly significant once we get those the fiscal year 23 financials audited, we'll be, be beginning the fiscal year 25 budget prep. At that point, we'll know and propose a, a surplus transfer at that time. Uh, a couple plan drawdowns in the motor fuel tax fund, the impact fee fund, uh, the capital improvement fund of about 7.5 million. Uh, it's important to note that was planned. We had a $5.4 million debt payoff. I won't say fire station three again. Um, but the fiscal year, it's important to note here that the, the budget was actually a $9.2 million drawdown, uh, so significantly better. Uh, and the water fund, again, a drawdown of 1.1 we expect at the end of the year. Again, budget for that was 2.9, so some savings there. Uh, the health insurance fund, this was the first year of that fund, is going to finish underwater about $92,000, uh, just more health insurance costs than we had anticipated. Um, fleet services fund will finish with a deficit. That was almost entirely related to fuel costs. 
and then uh, the, the joint ETSB or Northeast Lake County consolidated ETSB uh, with the plan drawdown there. Uh, basically, the timing of capital projects and uh, related to consolidation, CAD replacement, things like that. So that's where we expect to finish this year. Next year, uh, general, general fund is balanced. Uh, you can see the third line down there. Uh, no sur surplus or deficit. We're not using any reserves. Uh, motor fuel tax, again, plan drawdown for capital. Same thing with the impact fee fund. Um, PD restricted revenue fund. Again, those, those, all three of those are restricted uh, as to how we can use them. So we've typically historically used them for capital. Uh, capital improvement fund, this is our prior year surpluses that we're continuing to draw down. Um, same in the water and sewer fund, uh, 2.8 million. Um, and then we get back down to the ETSB fund, which again is just the timing of that CAD replacement. We included fund funding in there for kind of worst case scenario. It'll probably be significantly less than we included in there, but we want to have the authority based on where that's potentially heading. Looking at revenues across all funds, we kind of group them into eight different categories. Total 92 million, that's up 5.6% or about 5 million uh, from the prior year budget. Uh, major revenues is the largest category, overall 43.2. We'll look at that in a little more detail here when we get to the general fund, but that includes like sales tax, amusement tax, hotel, food and beverage, income tax, uh, those kind of major revenues. Charges for service, second largest category at 20.9% of all revenues, that includes water and sewer sales, um, contractual agreements for um, fire and dispatch services, and ambulance. Investments and contributions, third largest category, 17.3% of all revenues. Uh, that includes interest income, primarily police and fire pension funds, but also general fund and some of the other uh, funds that have a balance. Uh, other sources, 8.5% of all revenues, this includes transfers in from other funds. Uh, intergovernmental category makes up about 4.8. This is uh, motor fuel tax funds, 911 surcharge, reimbursement from the joint ETSB. Um, again, we'll hit all this stuff in greater detail as we work through the presentation, as you hear from the department heads and we get into other, other funds. Um, tax is a small amount, 2.3. That's telecommunications tax, resort tax, and road and bridge tax. Um, fines and forfeitures, 1.5%. That's red light, water, sewer penalties primarily, and then licenses and permits, building permits and business and liquor licenses there. Expenditures across all funds. Here we have nine categories, total 92.5, down nine point, sorry, down 2.1% or 2 million. Uh, no surprise, salaries and wages is the largest category uh, at almost 38%. That includes wages, overtime, pensions, pensions to pensioners. Um, employee benefits, 15 and 15.5%, that's health insurance, pension contributions, FICA, Medicare, um, those kind of expenses. Contractual services, 13.1%. That includes road resurfacing program, water purchases from Java, primarily are the biggest ones there. Uh, other financing uses, makes up 12.4%. Uh, that's transfers out to other funds and recapture rebate agreements that we have included in there. Uh, capital makes up 12%. This includes items in the capital plan, roads, water mains, vehicles, things like that. Uh, other contractual category, small amount, 3.4% here. That's where we pay for liability insurance, training, radio system costs um, for the communication center, things like that. Supplies, almost 3%. This is fuel, salt primarily, uh, fleet parts, meters for water and sewer in that category. Um, professional and technical services, 2.2%. It's primarily engineering, professional engineering for the, uh, for the capital program, financial services, um, primarily for the pension funds, investments for the pension funds, and then legal and red light collection fees. Um, and then debt service, 0.6%, down 90.5% or 5.4 million. Again, that's because we paid off promissory note last year. So the only thing remaining is the IEPA loan and the water and sewer fund. Uh, also included 250,000 in additional principal for that that debt payment, so we continue to pay that down aggressively. And again, we'll hit more detail on these as we, as we walk, through, walk through the funds. All right, personnel. Um, budgeted personnel is up four and a quarter of FTEs. Uh, in administration, we're up a half. The administrative assistant 
vacant administrative assistant position was switched to part-time, and then we added a network administrator uh, to plan for retirements. Community development up one, that is the move of the management analyst from fire to community development. That's been a process that's been happening for a year, maybe a little longer than that now. Uh, and the police department up three, uh, two sergeants as part of a two-year plan, and then a public safety compliance officer to help with some mandates and FOIA work that was unexpected. Uh, public Works, up 0.75 FTEs. That's a part-time locate uh, position, permanent part-time, so year-round part locate position. And then we, re we remain at budgeted, unbudgeted FTEs that we had started last year um, at seven. We may take that to nine, depending on uh, discussions with, with police and academy spots and things like that. So we may add two more unbudgeted officer positions just so we don't get too underwater, underwater there. That uh, only thing I, we have outstanding is the IEPA loan. As you can see, the, the chart there, the two uh, high bars are paying off the 2011 bonds, and then the red one is paying off Fire Station 3. That just leaves the IEPA loan uh, out there. Principal, original principal was just over 5.1 million. The rate is 1.84%, so it doesn't really pay at this time to pay that, pay that off early. Term is 20 years. We've already paid an additional 500,000 in principal. If we continue on that, we'll have it paid off in 10. Um, right, current outstanding is just under 4.2 million. And again, as I said, we have the lowest debt burden of any community under 25, over 25,000 uh, in population. This chart shows fund balance. Uh, the, the column on the far left is coming into this year. The column kind of in the middle is where we think we'll end this year. And then the column on the far right is where we think we'll end next year. Uh, just a couple items of note. General fund projected ending next year uh, is 30.5 million. That's right at 70% of expenditures. Uh, we do have a four and a half million dollar proposed surplus transfer that we'll talk about a little bit um, as we get through the presentation. Um, that'll be as part of the budget packet approval. Um, but essentially four and a half million from the fiscal year 22 surplus, two million to the capital fund, two million to the water and sewer capital fund and then uh, 500,000 to the health insurance fund given where that finished this year uh, to keep that fund uh, in, the, in the green. Uh, plan drawdowns again, motor fuel tax impact fee fund, a PD restricted revenue fund, uh, capital improvement fund, water and sewer, and the joint ETSB. Again, all capital related drawdowns. Looking specifically at the general fund, total revenues 49.1 million. That's up 6.1% or 2.8 million. Um, again, major revenues account for almost 70% of the general fund. So previously we were talking about across all funds, and now we're talking specifically general fund. Um, so 70% of the general fund, I got a slide on that in a minute. Um, taxes down 1.3%, 28,000. Really there, it's just truing up telecom, which has been going, telecommunications tax, which has been dropping uh, for several years now uh, based on consumer behavior, just adjust the road and bridge a little bit. Resort tax is up, but that also shows on the expenditure side in the recapture agreement. Licenses and permits up 13 and half percent or 160,000. We're anticipating two buildings for the Wood Lake project to be completed this year. So we included uh, revenue associated with that. Intergovernmental down 75.5% or 1.9 million. This is where the category where we had the ARPA funding, 2.1 million, the federal grant funding uh, COVID grant funding last year, so that we will not have that again this year. Um, charges for service up 18.8% or 1.4 million. Primarily here, it's the GEMT program or Ground Emergency Medical Transport Program, truing up to actuals. New program a couple years ago, we didn't really know what to expect. Um, so that has performed well, so we adjusted that budget, um, as well as the SRO programs, contractual increases for the Warren Waukegan Fire Protection District, and then just uh, general ambulance billing increase. Fines and forfeitures down 24.1% or 352,000. Uh, here it's almost entirely the, the red light program. Uh, as we discussed, we had some intersections that we're still working through some technological issues and some spacing issues about where, the, where they should be mounted and things like that. So um, don't expect that revenue to be back where it was historically. Investments and contributions up significantly 570,000, obviously increasing rate environment. Um, as well as police and fire pension funds, we budget for that to, to earn 7%. So, um, other sources 
up 105,000. This is where we just trued up to actual, or trued up to um, kind of the trend for damage to village property and work comp reimbursement. So I also see that a little bit in the expenditure side that Heather will talk about, but <laughs> um, just trued those up. Major revenues, just take this a little bit, a little bit deeper dive here. Total of 34.3 million, that's up 9.2% or 2.9 million. Sales tax, the largest piece of that, uh, that's 1.5 million of it. We, the internet sales tax law that went into effect, I guess a couple of years ago now, or a year and a half ago now, um, is primarily the driver there. Um, I, my estimation was three to 5%, so even on the high end, it's still, we're still exceeding that. Um, but Amazon is now one of our largest retailers, so it has shown um, some benefits there. Local use tax, up 75,000. We used an, an estimate from the Illinois Municipal League for that figure. Um, amusement tax down slightly, 100,000, just based on, on canceling uh, Holiday in the Park and where season pass sales may end up. Uh, hotel tax up 25% or 450,000 again, primarily here it's Great Wolf and then other hotels um, kind of getting back to pre-COVID. There was a little bit more of a lag there uh, coming back from COVID. Food and beverage up 270,000. Again, we talked about this being our most recession-proof uh, revenue stream here, so that's really truing up to, to what oh, the trend that we've seen, and even being conservative on it. Uh, income tax, 746,000 up. Again, that's an IML estimate. Historically, they have overshot that, so we're, we'd be a little bit more conservative. We're a little bit more conservative than their estimate when it comes to income tax. Total general fund expenditure side now, uh, 49.1 million up 6.1% or 2.8. Uh, salaries and wages, obviously the largest, largest category up 7.7% or 2 million. Uh, that includes salaries and overtime. We talk more about that on page 106 of the budget document and some assumptions that we made there. Um, employee benefits kind of follow suit up 4.3, 344,000. This is where we see the police and fire uh, pension contributions, so the village's contribution to those. Just to, uh, to get a little bit more in depth on that, the, on the police side, uh, the, the actuarial required contribution actually decreased. Um, rather than take that decrease, we took last year's number and increased it by 3%. The net result is an overfunding by $1.2 million. So that is a significant overfunding on a payment of right around 2 million. So. Um, the funded percentage for police is almost 90%. So that is the funding policy and the work we did to, to keep it, keep funding and even when the arc went down is paying dividends there. As it is on the fire side, fire also decreased um, 304,000 uh, to 1.6. Instead of taking that decrease, we took last year's number, increased it 3%, results in an overfunding of 621,000. And again, there we're seeing the dividends uh, funded percentage there is 85.2%. So very well-funded police and fire pensions. These numbers don't include the market drops that we've seen, so th they will likely go up next year, so we won't see quite the overfunding that we did this year. Um, but anything that we can obviously overfund now pays off in the, in the future, so. Professional services category up 7%, 82,000. This is largely personnel testing and then the, the red flex contract, which is the red light camera contract. Um, contractual services up 6.1%, 109,000. This is some cloud network for some uh, security services and then some tree removal, additional tree removal. Other contractual up 136,000 here. Training schools, damage to village property as we talked about on the revenue side. Uh, this is the expenditure side. Um, the supplies category up 10.8%. This is computer hardware for some positions that, that are going, some changing around and then uh, snow and ice control materials up 18,000. And then other financing uses uh, up 2.1% or 175,000. This is largely the transfers to the health and the fleet fund, um, the resort tax recapture. Obviously the tax goes up the more we, we rebate, so that those two follow suit. And then we did not include a capital transfer this year. Um, in fiscal year 23, we budgeted for a 500,000 with the $2 million proposed surplus transfer. We didn't need to budget for the $500,000 capital transfer. 
And with that, I will stop talking and turn it over to Pat. Yeah, so we'll jump into the department budgets now uh, a little deeper, like Brian said. So if there's questions along the way, um, feel free to jump in. So administration department, uh, looking at where we're gonna end for the year, a uh, little bit under budget. Um, this is mainly due to our salaries, vacancies. Everybody knows Donna retired. We did not fill that position throughout the year, left that vacant, spread her duties amongst staff uh, the best we could do, uh, which plays into next year's uh, numbers too. Again, transitioning that position from full-time to a part-time uh, general secretary to help out at the front desk like Brian mentioned earlier. Um, also related to year in estimates and contractuals, bank fees was over. That was just moving money around um, into higher earning accounts. So while uh, the expenditure was over, um, the revenue that we realized covers that ten, tenfold. So that's actually a good thing um, in this instance. Uh, major project throughout the year, obviously the strategic plan update um, that everybody participated in that drives a lot of the requests um, and resource allocations that's in the budget that you hear about from the departments tonight. Um, also brought a new assistant the administrator on board this year, uh, had some changes in the finance department. Christine worked nonstop, uh, working to recruit and fill positions throughout the department. Chris and his team with the continued focus on cybersecurity and supporting all the technology across the departments. And then obviously Ellen and Jody, um, busy working on the uh, small business capital grant program, um, getting that up and rolling, site uh, visits, recruiting new businesses, working with our current businesses that are looking to expand. So. A pretty busy year uh, in the administration department. Um, next year, uh, I touched on the uh, swap of the full-time position uh, to part-time to help with the front desk. Uh, Brian included some uh, funding in there for the Munis uh, disaster recovery program. So if something catastrophic happens with our systems, they can go offsite, um, access our finances, keep things like payroll, accounts payable, um, all that rolling along so we can weather those storms. Uh, budgeted uh, some funding for a wage study. So we talked about that pretty heavily in the strategic plan update as far as making sure that the village is uh, competitively placed in the labor market. Um, obviously we wanna attract uh, quality candidates, salary and benefits is just one component of that, but obviously a very important uh, component when uh, individuals are deciding uh, where to apply for a job. So we wanna uh, use an outside firm uh, to take a look at that and make sure we're where we need to be. Um, also with the strategic plan, um, like I said, some other initiatives that are in there that we're gonna be working on additional community events. We've reached out to the park district to talk about that as far as additional concerts in the park and then a larger community event probably in the fall um, on the west side of town. Brian and his staff's gonna be looking at um, just our revenues and how those are divers diversified. Um, and if there's any opportunities um, there to reduce some of the reliance on uh, such elastic revenues. Um, Austin with uh, communicating with the residents, uh, we included funding uh, for a survey. So we conducted one last year in conjunction with the strategic plan. That'll be something that probably on a every other year schedule uh, host a community wide survey uh, to continue to gather that input and make adjustments along the way. Um, and then again, just working through HR with a number of retirements that we have upcoming uh, to make sure that we're attracting quality candidates and that they're reflective of the, of the community and um, meeting the needs that the community expects. So that's the administration budget. Uh, switching over to the <clears throat> IS division in administration, um, I'll talk about some of the 23 uh, results and Brian will walk you through some initiatives for next year. Um, probably our biggest thing is staffing and development. And uh, as we prep for transitions, um, the future is sitting right next to me and the future is very bright. So in addition to that, we brought on our system administrator position, uh, Jeff Dishno. He's now a meaningful contributor. He's working independently. He's taking initiative on various things. Uh, we also have the part-time uh, technicians that come over from other departments. They bring uh, both a wealth of fire and police knowledge of the business processes and we'd spend a lot of time in making sure that they're getting up to speed on the nuts and bolts and the detailed technical parts of that. And uh, both individuals have been doing exceptionally well. It's been a huge plus for us and we're very thankful for the opportunity to do that. Uh, next, managed security services. We did a partnership with Arctic Wolf uh, last year and uh, that's borne a lot of fruit. They monitor logs and look at events. They review the data collected and they give us areas for improvement, um, probably as many areas of improvement as we can possibly do with 
staffing and whatnot, but we've worked very diligently on that. And uh, in this year's renewal for our insurance, in the cyber section of that, they were much more detailed in their questioning and we had much stronger responses. We're not necessarily across the finish line, but I feel very good about the progress that we made. We uh, have regular reviews with Arctic Wolf on the team, uh, on our side and their side. Uh, we've complemented our strong endpoint security posture with a better cadence for doing server updates and things we couldn't get to um, previously. Good progress on that. We've made progress on uh, automated password management, big moves forward in multi-factor authentication, and giving users options to move files around in a secure manner. It was a big plus as well. Next topic was facilities and equipment. In the dispatch center, we uh, started doing next generation call, 911 call delivery uh, in August, I believe it was. We we're the first in Lake County. Uh, we're in the first 5% statewide. I believe subsequently Vernon Hills and Glenview have been added to that list. Everybody else is going to transition sometime later this year. We have new 9-1 answering positions, including adding a seventh position, new radio consoles also adding a seventh position, giving us console priority for Starcom 21, which affects the police radios, upgraded our logging recorder. We did audio visual updates to the village hall, police station, sound, uh, video distribution, security, our video uh, security system. We incorporated the Lake County Passage video, giving public works access to that real-time traffic information. Um, and before the year's out, we'll be undertaking some work at Fire Station One. On the CAD and RMS replacement project, the biggest uh, application drivers in public safety, uh, we continue to work with the Lake County group. They're targeting a uh, first half of 2024 go live. Uh, we're taking a leadership position on that. We have uh, really strong participation. Um, our uh, part-time person, uh, Police Sergeant Mike Mann, is a leader on that. He's done an exemplary job. Um, one thing I would high well, highlight with that is as we move into the data conversion phase, uh, we're being cautioned that there's a lot of work to be done in data validation, et cetera, and a lot of man hours that will go into that on the police department staff side. Um, but that's a, that's a pretty good summary, I think, of uh, 2023. And I'd like to hand it over to Ryan to take you forward into the future. All right, so looking at 2024, uh, as you can see, uh, we've got a 13% increase there. Um, our major contributor to that increase is the addition of that network administrator position. Uh, this is effectively the position I came from, and uh, we're looking to fill that once again as part of uh, uh, upcoming or potential future retirement. Um, based on the ramp up time for new staff, uh, this is the fiscal year to put that in. Uh, the staff member will be focusing on network and security operations as we go forward. Uh, we have um, end of life router equipment planned in this fiscal year still, more in next. Um, as well as uh, service delivery changes for telephony coming in over uh, internet delivery and uh, cellular data delivery changes. Um, then there's other core networking end of life things that we see in the capital plan that this person would be material and, and working on. Uh, in this budget, Chris highlighted some of it uh, already that we'll continue our partnership with Arctic Wolf. Um, that has been highly beneficial, as Chris mentioned, in fulfilling the requirements from the village of, village's cybersecurity insurance carrier, uh, but as well as bringing logging, monitoring, and guidance to our environment that we can't practically take on internally. Um, for the upcoming year, uh, both Arctic Wolf and the cybersecurity insurance broker have suggested the adoption of a cybersecurity framework or standard set um, and at the same time, there's been a federal push uh, to bring additional resources uh, to state and local levels um, through dedicated cybersecurity agencies. Um, they have provided uh, templates and benchmarks to achieve these sort of standards uh, at no cost to organizations like us. Um, so that's not really a budget impact, but there is a significant amount of staff time uh, both in developing policies and implementing configuration changes to achieve these goals. 
uh, working towards these set of standards um, aligns with the well-maintained uh, infrastructure goals in the strategic plan um, and fulfilling or filling that network administrator position would contribute uh, significantly into that process. Um, as Chris mentioned, we expect the Lake County um, Public Safety CAD RMS project to go live this year. I was going to jump in and say again that, that Sergeant Mann, who works with us in part time, has been a, a significant contributor to that project internally, um, but also a major contributor representing uh, the Village of Gurney in the working groups um, in the county meetings. Uh, there's still plenty to do there, as Chris mentioned, um, data conversion. We've got application uh, access and distribution issues. Uh, to work through still and then network connectivity for our 911 center and our um, public safety mobile data computers. So there's a lot to do there still. Um, we'll also see Tyler ERP upgraded this year. That's due to end of life, uh, both on the ERP side and the server operating environment. Uh, we have also uh, multiple uh, desktop productivity applications, Microsoft Office, Acrobat, they're coming end of life or are end of life and need to be replaced due to security concerns. Um, this is a little bit of a budget increase from where we've been at uh, as these applications represent a good example of moving from a traditional purchase the license and maintenance model and straight into recurring cloud services. Uh, on the equipment side, we were up there as well. Uh, we have desktop and laptop replacements uh, kind of at the top of the list. We're playing catch up from supply chain issues over the last few years with, with COVID, but also looking to meet the Windows 10 uh, end of life requirements in 2025. So we have sort of a number that we're trying to hit over the next couple of fiscal years. Um, supply chain is coming back. Uh, we're seeing a good um, good options now in, in pricing and uh, selection. Um, on the server equipment side, we have a similar story. Uh, we pushed some replacements initially due to supply chain and then due to market position. We knew new models were coming and it was a poor time to, to enter that market. So we expect that to uh, move forward in early uh, fiscal year 24. Um, other smaller uh, highlights, we have um, our Wi-Fi network hardware is approaching end of life, uh, copier machine MFP devices, there's a certain quantity of those that will be up this year, um, and we'll be starting our IP security uh, camera replacement program as well. You know, that's uh, looking at the life cycle of these products and just planning ahead for replacements so they're not big lumpy budget items. You know, and that's just it. The highlights from each of these categories, these are just sort of the, the top things. They represent um, life cycle planning where multiple factors are considered uh, to choose how long equipment stays in service uh, before replacement. You know, it's physical equipment like computers or servers or applications. Um, we look at uh, capacity, supportability, manufacture, end of life, and business requirements, all as data points when we're selecting new products. Um, and finally, I just want to say that without um, the rest of our staff, you know, we have uh, part-time uh, folks from the police and fire department, Sergeant Mike Mann and firefighter paramedic Brad Lambert, who have contributed greatly to our, our department this year. Um, our full-time technician, John Frederick. Uh, Jeff Dishno has come on board and is contributing. Um, we can't sit here and talk about these things in front of you without their help. Um, so thank you for that. Thanks, Brian. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Are you sure? Go for it. I'm looking <laughs> at it. Um, I think it's a pretty quick question, but if it's not a quick answer and you want to table it some other time, let me know. So if there was an incident or a disaster impacting our technology, uh, what percentage of actions could be handled via remote access? So it's you, I, I understand we've got a network administrator and the two of you and I appreciate your information. And is that remote access adequate? And is it through VPN? Any talk about that? So in a, in a disaster scenario, it does depend on what that disaster is. Um, bringing on the Tyler ERP disaster recovery was a partially to address that this year. So if we were offline for some period of time, we can continue to process payroll and, and accounts receivables. Um, we do have VPN access 
um, that is solid, it is robust. Um, we use multi-factor authentication to get there and we have remote access to consoles inside of the networks. Um, I used that extensively when I was working from home during COVID. Um, I was highly effective. I think our remote access solution is really good. Um, but you get into disaster recovery planning and it really does depend on what that disaster is. Um, we do have highly available backups. We do have multiple data centers. Um, as we move into some of these server replacements, we're, we will be changing how we do some of those things in order to accommodate, say, um, the village hall going offline. Um, I'm not sure if that really answers the I questions so. fully. So you don't consider it a risk at the level that you have? Well, I know you can't determine which scenario of an IT impact disaster, but you believe you have enough uh, via remote and VPN yeah, I, I, I believe that our remote access is, is robust. Thank you. Ask us that question before COVID. It yeah. might be slightly. Yeah, yeah no, we, we did bring up um, a lot of services um, in a rapid fashion uh, during COVID, and they proved to be um, fairly successful. Great, thank you. All right, Austin, you're up. You're next. So for the pub info budget, it's not the largest, but we have a lot going on because uh, it's you know really important to communicate to residents and the public and get our message out there. Uh, for the current year results, we were under budget 7.4% or 5,000. That was due to purchasing alternative software that uh, than what was budgeted. And, and this included Agora Pulse, which is a social media management software, and Canva, which is a graphic design software. For fiscal year 2023-2024, uh, our budget increased uh, significantly 21.5% or 15,000, mostly due to a few initiatives, one of them yielding from the strategic plan being the digital community survey. This will include a lot of opinion measures that were established during the planning process. Uh, next, we have a data-driven communication program, which includes a variety of uh, communications in different formats and uh, tracking engagements and how well the community receives that information. Uh, additionally, through that, uh, we, we plan to identify uh, and publish communications off of optimal send times and viewing times. Uh, there's, there's a tool and a program out there that will help us with these two things, as well as uh, analyzing uh, customer service data to assess uh, public information needs to see what information we can get out to better serve the community. Uh, additionally, we have some newsletter changes uh, that are taking place now and more for next year. Uh, this includes a scaling up of certain issues just to provide more information when we need to, where we need to, uh, as well as the change in the paper quality in the last issue and for future issues, as well as a new digital format. Uh, it's more of a uh, program to make it more readable online um, for residents in the community. Additionally, under the newsletter changes, just as a budget note, uh, paper prices have been increasing continually since the last year. So uh, we continue to deal with that. Uh, we, we, we plan to get some professional photography, um, get a professional photographer to take pictures of the village that are aesthetically pleasing, as well as use those photos to market uh, services and programs. Uh, to the village. Uh, additionally, we plan to uh, implement some digital signage. IT has uh, provided some preliminary estimates for some signage around Village Hall to really direct residents and uh, residents and visitors. I'm sorry, uh, uh, to that come to Village Hall of where they need to go and what information we could give them. That additionally, uh, cloud services, uh, contractual. Uh, uh, increases have gone up across the organization and uh, specifically hitting PubInfo because we got a lot of uh, cloud services within our budget. So that's really it. If you got any questions, feel free to ask. If not. Thanks, Austin. Dave? <clears throat> uh, real quick before David, uh, we have a, <coughs> a division with contractual, it's really village wide obligations. Um, and where we keep like our rebate agreements, recapture agreements, um, some of the stuff Ellen works on uh, in here. So fiscal year 23 results, finished a little bit over budget. That was primarily uh, Great Wolf performance. They performed better than expected. Therefore, the rebate uh, was better than or more than we thought. 
Um, next year, 3.1 million total budget. That's down 142,000. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we didn't have the $500,000 capital plan. That's where this expense would be. Uh, we included some additional funding for community events, uh, some the rebate agreements, existing rebate agreements and futures that come on, um, resort and amusement tax recapture agreements, the economic development reserve and the capital grant program that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and then we budgeted the maximum for the Visit Lake County uh, rebate, I guess, it's, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, contribution is probably the better word. Okay. I will uh, run through the two cost centers for that fall underneath community development. First one being building and safe, building safety and zoning. Um, came in just a hair under budget this year, um, just shy of a $1.6 million or $1.4 million budget last year, um, $6,000 under the, the budget. Uh, highlights from this year, we were able to hire a, a new chief plan reviewer uh, who was promoted from within and then backfilled that position with a new plumbing inspector. So very uh, pleased with both of those hires and are both hitting the ground running. Um, this last year we had, um, so this last year was our 10 year anniversary for our new software system that we've had in community development, our LAMA land management system. Uh, so I've got 10 solid years of good data uh, from uh, permits and projects and code enforcement. Uh, ran uh, an analysis as to the public investment into our community. Last year was the highest that we had seen. We added just under $100 million of new investment into the buildings and structures of our community. So that's a, a very significant number to see for reinvestment, people investing in their homes and their properties. Um, moving on to uh, initiatives and the current year's or the proposed year's budget, uh, as discussed earlier, the uh, management analyst position that serves both community development and economic development is moving over from the fire and administration cost centers. Uh, so that's the biggest swing in uh, the budget for the community development uh, department. Um, and then all of the associated costs that go along with that with health insurance and, and um, uh, benefits. Um, basically, some of the biggest initiatives that we've got with all the new people and the new roles is training. Get everybody familiar with all the codes, all their new responsibilities, and knowing what their roles are in their new positions and making sure they have the adequate training that they need to, uh, to succeed in their new roles. Moving over to our engineering division. Uh, last year we finished 2.5% or around 25 grand under the budget. Uh, budget for engineering side is just under a million dollars a year. Um, some of the things that were accomplished last year, we were able to promote our assistant village engineer, Mr. Nick Leach, up to the village engineer position. Uh, we rehired a vacant engineering assistant position, which had been vacant since uh, early days of COVID. And then we were also able to reinstate our intern program, which is a, a fantastic program to get young college bound engineering students, um, some good on the job training and, and experience uh, doing some of the, the tasks that we need to do uh, that sometimes fall between the cracks if during the busier times of the year. Uh, so they were able to help us out with a lot of the inspections, the routine inspections that uh, we, we try to take on each year. Uh, looking forward to the 23-24 budget. Um, once again, maintaining those programs. Um, budget for this year is just a hair down from last year of 926,000. Uh, basically, it's, it's timing of the salaries and the positions that, uh, that came on board. Um, Biggest category swings, we've got a, a tuition bump. Uh, we've got an employee looking at uh, possible doing some more graduate level training. Um, and then the training in schools that I talked about earlier for all of our employees, you know, making sure that the people have the tools that they need to do their job effectively. Um, once again, we're gonna see a very strong capital improvement program this year. Uh, we're gonna be stretched to our limits and be not only managing the projects ourselves, but managing the consultants that are managing the project. So that's gonna be our, our primary emphasis as we enter these uh, next summer construction months. And that is all I have for you tonight. If any questions, be happy to answer. 
All right, thank you. Good evening. Uh, 20, uh, our fiscal year uh, 23 results. Uh, we're going to finish slightly over budget, about $27,000. Uh, generally, that's related to testing, training, and uh, overtime needs. Um, as, as most of you are well aware, uh, we, we've had quite the hiring frenzy at the police department. Uh, we've hired 26 uh, new officers uh, since second quarter of fiscal year 22. Uh, 15 this fiscal year alone. Uh, 11 of those 15 are still currently in training as we're still seeing about a 10 month uh, train up from uh, the day that they start the academy until the day that they impact uh, the schedule. Um, we did conduct five entry level tests in the last uh, fiscal year and a half, three this year alone. Uh, we did promote our will at the completion of tonight's board meeting, have promoted four sergeants uh, one commander and one deputy chief. Uh, as far as wellness goes, uh, last year I spoke about uh, a wellness program and pushing out the cortical uh, wellness app. Uh, that app has been successful. Um, it is confidential and anonymous, but it does give us a platform uh, in their cell phones where they uh, are able to receive any information uh, at a moment's notice. Uh, and we've gotten really positive feedback from our staff and, uh, and our, uh, some of our retired folks because we did push that out to all of our retired members as well as everybody's family, uh, family members as well. Uh, we are continuing to improve upon and offer additional uh, wellness training. Uh, so all of our uh, staff at the police department, uh, both uh, sworn and civilian, uh, have mandatory monthly uh, wellness training that they are participating in through an online platform that's related to uh, the Cortical app, and, um, and then we're also uh, implementing uh, more critical incident stress debriefing uh, situations for our staff to respond or to, uh, to receive additional training and counseling uh, related to events within the community. Um, this week, uh, actually today, uh, we started our mandatory uh, wellness, mental health wellness visits with uh, professionals, and that is where our, our officers uh, are going in person uh, to meet with a wellness professional um, that is related to uh, some mandatory requir statutory requirements in the, in the state of Illinois, but is also a, uh, a, a project that we are really uh, excited about and making sure that uh, we're not only providing the information, the training, uh, and the knowledge that they need to take care of themselves and their family, but we're also uh, mandating that they do in-person visits. That will, that will uh, that again started this week, and we'll see some more of that in the years to come. Um, as far as leadership goes, uh, we are still uh, uh, providing supervision and leadership training to all of our new supervisors. Included in that is a wellness seminar next Monday that all of our supervisory staff uh, will attend. It is being hosted in-house. We're bringing a professional in for eight hours worth of leadership training centered around wellness. Uh, to make sure that our atmosphere, our culture, our climate is where it needs to be so that our staff feel comfortable enough to come forward and ask for assistance should they need it. As far as initiatives in fiscal year 24, uh, again, as uh, Director Geisnell touched on, uh, we are seeing projections for needing to hire uh, additional staff, not only related to the increases, but still playing catch up. Um, so probably somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 10 new officers. Uh, for May, September, and January academies. Um, part of the proposal was the addition of some sergeants. Again, and that is to get into proper uh, staffing numbers and uh, span of control, supervisionary. Uh, so that is including a sergeant back into investigations uh, to assist with the investigations division, but also as we get to our staffing, uh, scheduled staffing that we need to, uh, the, the build out of the visitor-oriented policing team and the sergeant that would be needed to run one half of that team. Um, public safety compliance officer, uh, Director Gaznell touched on that. Uh, again, it is something that we need to deal with mandates. Um, again, unfunded mandates from the state of Illinois, but also FOIAs and the increase in FOIAs that we're seeing and the time that it takes uh, to deal with all of the body-worn camera and in-car camera footage related to those FOIAs. And so, uh, uh, we are looking to uh, fill that with a full-time position. Uh, with that, will be their primary functions uh, throughout the day. 
As far as increases, uh, we are going to see an uh, increase, or, or we're asking for an increase of 7.3%, a little bit over a million. I think it's $1.3 million. Uh, that, again, related to training, uh, testing, and um, in, uh, in, in the uh, leadership uh, succession planning. Uh, a large increase to training related not only to recruitment and retention, career development, um, but also the services that we provide to the community. Uh, with the hiring of 26 uh, new police officers and more to come, uh, we have a lot of uh, a catch up to do to provide them the training that they need to, to, to provide the services to the community that we expect. And so there's an increase, a significant increase to our training line uh, related to that. Uh, we have also adopted a supervisor and command level training program that is directly related to succession planning. Uh, as with the increase of new officers and the needs that they may have or may require of supervisors, uh, we are also promoting a number of new supervisors into roles that uh, we need to provide them all of the education and the training uh, necessary to make sure that they have the tools and the resources available to them. And so as we explored different programs that were out there, uh, we decided to an adopt, uh, adopt a program that we would make mandatory for all of our supervisors, myself included. And so that uh, is a new program uh, that will be running out. It will be monthly uh, online, real world type training and scenarios in which a supervisor will put them in the shoes and make a decision. So decisional making training as well. Uh, we will also push out a department wide wellness presentation for all of our staff this year. Uh, that will include all of our sworn and civilian. Uh, they will attend an in-person wellness presentation by a professional. And, um, and that will be uh, a program that we're bringing back that uh, was first offered to our staff about 10 years ago uh, when Chief Woodside sat in the seat. And so uh, we found a lot of value in uh, BreachPoint and we're bringing that back and we'll also be offering that to all of their family members on a separate presentation on a separate day uh, for them. Uh, uh, Austin touched on digital information boards. I just want to touch on that as well because we will, or we are asking to push a program out uh, for digital information boards, both externally and internally in the police department related to information sharing, guidance, but also wellness. We're going to have a number of wellness messages on the digital boards inside the building in the break room in the squad room, just to continue to reinforce that, that message. A couple of highlights. Uh, we are budgeting for three new squad cars, uh, one, one extra new evidence technician vehicle, uh, some unmarked vehicles, and uh, with the assistance of some grants and some restricted funds, uh, looking to replace the two canine squads. Um, and we're also looking to uh, update and uh, replace our, uh, our firearms and some new plate carriers, rifle plate carriers uh, for our, our police officers. And then as far as investigations goes, uh, tying into one of our pillars, uh, some additional cameras that will assist with uh, investigations and uh, proactive response to in-progress in crimes. So with that being said, thank you, and I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Questions, you guys must be doing an awesome job. No questions, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Look at that. Yeah, you're not done yet. I was so excited. Yeah, you're not done yet. <laughs> I apologize. Well, Director Velcover covered most of this. Uh, as far as comms go, uh, we'll be coming in a little bit under budget, about $138,000. Uh, that is ge generally related to uh, some staffing and, uh, and replacement of staffing at a lower rate. Uh, we did successfully train and implement three new operators this year. We currently have two operators, communications operators that are in training today. And uh, we do have, st we still do have two vacancies in the comms center. Um, Director Volkover uh, touched on countywide CAD, RMS, and mobile. Uh, again, looking for a sometime spring uh, push out in 2024. And he also touched on the upgrades to the phones, the radios, and um, uh, so that is, that is it as far as results go for, uh, for comms for uh, the current fiscal year. 2024 fiscal year initiatives, uh, again, looking at uh, uh, replacing the two uh, vacancies in comms. Uh, we're also uh, looking to increase our, our line for training and career development. 
recognizing uh, not only the importance to the current staff and, and what the community needs are, but making sure that uh, we provide the best employees forward should there be a consolidation, uh, because we know that that will pay us dividends uh, in, in the rear mirror. Rear -view mirror. Um, there's a couple of uh, uh, some trainings uh, related to CAD configur configurations that our staff will need to attend this year. And then uh, like the uh, police department with supervisory command leadership training, uh, we are also including comms supervisors uh, in that as well as our other civilian supervisors. And so uh, comms has a separate budget line for training and, and leadership succession planning. And um, so we're preparing them uh, for that uh, for the future. So with that being said, I know that was quick. I apologize, but Director Velko recovered most of the important things. I'm available to answer any questions you may have. There are none. All right, this time I'm done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chief. Good evening, everyone. Um, 2023 uh, budget year, well, I guess calendar year 2022 is the busiest budget or busiest emergency response year for any fire department's ever had. And by significant amount, uh, we ran over 7,700 calls last year. Uh, we were at 7,200 the prior year. It's putting us at about 22 calls a day. Um, it's really changed. These are directly long calls and the fact that our patient transports going to the hospitals has increased. You've seen it in the revenue side when you saw the ambulance billing going up so significantly in the GEMnet. That's directly related to us transporting people. Um, the total amount of calls is across the board though. I've been trying to look at data, trying to figure out exactly what's driving it. And there is no one section that's doing it. We've talked in the past about the senior facilities and those definitely are involved, but their increase is the same as our resident use increase has been this year. So we actually continue in December, we ran the most calls we've ever run in a single month ever in the history of the fire department. And now January and February, both were our busiest January and February we've ever had. So we're continue to see the same increase going throughout the year. Uh, it's been a challenge, especially my next point, uh, staffing. Uh, we were down people quite a bit during the summer. So this really taxed the people that we had in place this year. Uh, we ran a lot of calls. That being said, and I'm looking over at the HR director, uh, Christine, I'm not sure how she pulled it off, but she ran numerous tests for us. She was able to find candidates out there uh, from around the county and outside the county. She really did a far reaching recruitment and we were able to get people in. We're actually staffed to the level we are and we're starting to bring some additional people in. Uh, you'll see we're gonna finish over budget this year. The re two main reasons, overtime the entire summer, fall, and now we're actually staffed a little heavy predicting future retirements. And we did this because there is a paramedic shortage in Illinois. Um, during all of COVID, paramedic classes were canceled. They just did not meet. So we're seeing that with the retirements, with the stress of these, these positions and jobs, paramedics are leaving at an earlier rate than they used to with no new paramedics. We're definitely seeing this demand very challenging. We're bringing people in. We're hiring people that have very little experience. Uh, it's definitely driven our training in allowing them to respond as second responders on calls. It's taken a longer time to bring them up to speed. So it continues to be a challenge. Uh, we are about ready to recruit again. Uh, I shouldn't say we, Christine's about to recruit again on our behalf, uh, run another test for us. Uh, next year we're predicting four to six openings, so we'll continue. Uh, next year, some of the big initiatives we have, we've been talking about this one for a while, uh, the deputy chief. We will be putting a deputy chief in place uh, this summer. It came down to the fire station one project, which was approved uh, a couple of board meetings ago. That's allowing us to add an office, put it in a position there. That's going to allow us to continue with our succession planning, bring that person up to speed, carrying some of the workload up there and the loss of uh, Jody's position. She continues to do, even though she's stationed here at the village hall, <laughs> lots of work, lots of busy work and I really appreciate it. Uh, she's looking forward to handing that off because she's doing two jobs at this point. And as soon as that deputy chief's in place, we'll be getting a lot of those tasks hand off. Uh, it, as well with the fire station one project, one of the big parts of that is we talked about it is the new uh, bunk room at station one. This is a big direct correlation. You know, Chief Smith talked a lot about wellness. 
this is directly to it. This is the ability to be in a room where you're able to get a little better rest, better sleep, some privacy, some time by yourself. When you're in a station with seven other people, it's hard to find that time, sometimes for your wellness, have an opportunity to be by yourself. These rooms being in there and the quality of sleep increasing directly goes to the wellness. Uh, the other things we have in front of us I talked about is the new hire and we have promotional testing. That's part of the state statute every two years. We have to do promotional testing. That's a large driver of our increase in our budget there. Part of the new hire as well as ongoing, we do annual wellness physicals. Every employee does meet with the doctor, both on a medical and a mental health wellness check. We do that annually, that'll continue on, that's budgeted for. The next big challenge is with all these retirements, we've lost a lot of our specialized rescue teams. Um, last year we focused on bringing people into the hazmat team, countywide, and we got hazmat. This year we're looking at the five disciplines of structural collapse, below ground, trench, high angle, um, and this is going to allow us to bring six team members here. This is training that they're gonna do above and beyond outside work. This allows us, especially with having Six Flags Great American Town, uh, we've been unfortunate a couple times rides have been stuck high. It allows us to go up there, be able to secure the people and bring them down. This is also as we continue to have projects around town where people are digging and doing trenches. This gives us this special training. Um, we're fortunate we've always had these in place. However, the retirements has really drained these teams. So. Our status will be back up to six, which we consider full staffing at that level. So with that and all the officer training and everything else that will continue to go on, we have a definite increase in that area. So that's the excitement in the fire department next year. Come on, John, act excited then. That's <laughs> 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 All right, thank you guys. Uh, I will be talking about the public works streets budget first. So. Um, ultimately, we ended up fiscal year end up 1.0% uh, or $42,000. We maintain pretty much everything in the village that you travel on, drink, or you know anything in between, but I'll focus on streets first. So we always continue to maintain the level of service, whether we have a, a strong budget or a decreased budget due to COVID. We continue to maintain street lights and signs, storm sewers, potholes, curbs, sidewalks, trees, ditches, landscape medians, just to name a few. Um, this snows, this year, season's snow and ice control totals as of March 1, uh, 13 events, 2,400 tons of salt, I'm rounding here, 28,000 gallons of liquid de-icer, and all of that just to battle 26 and a half inches of frozen water. So, but we got it off the roads and kept it safe out there. Um, some of the initiatives that we completed this year, we got some new village signs made, so those will be installed when the weather gets better. We didn't want to put them out right before snow season. Um, we relocated the transformer that was over by Almond and Data, so it was no longer in a strike zone. We also um, installed the LED lights in Aberdeer, and the poles have now arrived, so we'll be installing the decorative poles there as well, uh, just to name a couple things that we did. For 2024 initiatives, we're up 6.2% for our budget for next year. We've had a lot of personnel changes as, as have been mentioned. So we had three retirements this past year and when we have retirements, it allows people to kind of move. So if there's a retirement in streets, utility is offered the opportunity to move over. So a lot of people took that opportunity. Actually, all three positions were filled internally by transfers. So then we had some utility positions to fill, which I can talk about later. Uh, we also mentioned the part-time utility locator position. So I think that'll help offset some of the um, stress to staff that happens in the summertime with respect to workload. Um, and that'll be split 50-50, the funding on that, because not only will they locate underground utilities related to uh, water, they will also be locating um, electric and storm sewer, which relates to streets. Increased budget items for this next year um, include tree trimming. So we're implementing the standard or trying to meet the standard of trimming every tree once every six years. Um, in the past, we've trimmed whatever we could afford within the budget, uh, but we're trying to move to a more systematic approach as our trees get larger and larger. We're gonna have to spend more and more money as their diameters get bigger to keep them in good condition. Uh, we're continuing with the emerald ash borer treatments as well as the 50-50 parkway tree planting program. Uh, building maintenance costs continue to rise, as they do, I think, everywhere. So our buildings hitting, has hit and exceeded the 20-year mark, and we have HVAC and garage overhead doors and everything that needs some maintenance and replacement so they don't all go bad at the same time. 
Um, in addition, we also have a larger allocation to the fleet services fund, which nets zero every year. So if there's any questions on streets, I'm happy to answer. Oh, and people have been hitting a lot of street lights. That's what Brian was talking about earlier. With damage to village property, that and hydrants. The big street lights, the tall ones. Yeah, the big ones. They one. can't run over the small ones. That we have to hire a crane yeah. truck to put back in, yes. Grace, you want to take that one? So taking a look at the 911 budget, uh, 911 fund budget um, for what is <clears throat> planned for next year. Um, probably worth elaborating a little bit on the Lake County CAD RMS project. So that's a countywide project. Everybody participating uh, virtually across the entire county. Uh, Lake County ETSB is taking a lead role on that along with Lake County Sheriff in terms of funding. We have budgeted for a worst case scenario whereby we need to go it alone. So you see those numbers in the budget. If everything comes to pass, that will be precautionary and we'll just have a share of maintenance costs and it'll be a, a net fiscal win for everybody participating. On the Starcom radio side of things, Starcom is a managed radio service. So you pay monthly fees, you pay uh, buy-in for equipment and things up front, um, both Gurney Police and Zion Police have been looking at uh, ETSB participating at a higher level uh, with those expenditures. We have reached out to the state to make sure that that is allowable expenditure and everything we've done to date is certainly falls in the allowable category, but as we look to expand that, we want some clarification from them. Um, on the CAD AVL maintenance side, we put mobile routers in the cars, we do the mobile data computers, which we'll mention a little bit uh, farther on, plus we maintain the existing legacy CAD system that we operate today. Until this new system is going, we need to keep the uh, status quo moving along. Connectivity, we pay fees for connecting in the Zion uh, police station, as well as connections off to Starcom and other things like that. We'll also have future connectivity costs potentially in connecting in with the county system. Uh, we I mentioned MDCs. There's a number of fire MDCs that need uh, replacement based on legacy operating systems and a vendor who has ceased operation. Um, the vendor we use on the police side has been very good, strong financial position, good track record. So we might be moving the fire department units over to that same vendor. Um, workstation maintenance, we continue to update uh, the positions that the dispatchers use in the center. And for ProQA, uh, that's our uh, review process that uh, for all EMD calls, we have a third party uh, neutral, uh, well-established, rigorous uh, rating system. And uh, communication planner Jones wanted me to highlight how much that saves them time and gives them a very objective process for reviewing those. Um, I can relate to the fact that when we started EMD, there was a lot of question about could you really take on giving medical advice over the phone from a liability standpoint. And that program, the training, the reviews, and all the work they put into it makes that possible uh, and very successful. Um, lastly, I think we have uh, uh, additional new radios in the budget as well as a share of a mobile generator that would provide a alternate fuel source, alternate generator for the 911 center. And it's a shared cost with other departments so that we can get the most usage out of that as we move forward. And I'd be happy to answer any questions or, or Brian was intimately involved in the preparation of this budget as well. Um, and yeah, Molly, just, I apologize that she couldn't be here tonight. Just uh, real quick, the note, the last note on the slide was, um, when the when the joint ETSB considered the budget, they had a couple minor changes um, related to timing, um, moving radios, Starcom radios forward or backwards, fiscal years. So that's what that piece is. And then the mobile generator, we actually had in this year's budget, and we we included it in next year's budget. But it looks like we're going to get it done this year. So I was going to take that out of next year's budget. Just notes for some changes we'll see for the final budget when that comes before you in April. Just one quick question. Uh, Pro QA, that's a new, is that new this year? 
Has it all been done in-house prior to that? It, no, it has been our partner right from the get-go on that. Um, the part where they do the reviews uh, was a short follow-on after the program went in, and there was some internal discussion about doing those reviews in-house versus sending them out. Um, and I'm happy to say that everybody across the board is very satisfied with that decision. But that w it wasn't part of the original, but it was prior to this year. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, Trustee O'Brien. I just wanted to tie in your first presentation to this one. I'm always proud when Gurney is an innovator in safety things, like whatever that 911 thing was. Mm -hmm. Is that going to move to the consolidated as well? And, and what was it? Yeah, so uh, next generation 911, think about uh, 911 up until now had been the same phone technology they started using in the 50s. Now with next generation, they're delivering it via an IP, a computer network, and it opens the gateway to text to 911. It opens the gateway to um, video to 911. It helps enable better call transfers between centers and things like that. The state has mandated that everybody move to that network. Uh, they were hoping to be farther along than they actually are at this point, but we fulfilled our obligation and were ready on time, had everything lined up to move. Um, that hasn't been the case necessarily statewide. In my humble estimation, they'll be lucky to get everybody moved over by the end of 2023, but they are obligated to get that done uh, legislatively and, and through the statewide 911 administrator's office. But it's it's really moves them from the past into the future for how those 911 calls are delivered. Uh, it makes it more robust. It gives them more capabilities, and it absolutely will be on day one in the consolidated center. There's no no question about that. Great, thank you. Can I just do a carry on to that? Because you know I always like the next gen discussion and texting. So are we able to implement it in Gurney before Lake County? Uh, so our equipment is ready to receive text 91, but we are Waiting following the along with the state. They will provide the text control center functionality that really uh, makes that ubiquitous. You have a few pockets in Illinois that are doing it now, but they went and did next generation 901 on their own prior to the state. Um, there's some opportunity to do that, but the state is... Uh, currently awarding that contract for their half of it, so to speak, and we'll follow on closely with that. Um, we want to make sure that not only we can do it, but all our other partners in Lake County can. And uh, I think it was probably the best path to work with the state rather than going our own on that. I don't know that it would have saved us a lot of time. Um, our, and our equipment wasn't ready until this past summer in, in August. Is that address your question thank you thanks thanks Chris sure. uh, real quick we'll just uh, hit hit a few funds here um, a lot of this stuff in here we've we've talked about um, in the discussion already uh, motor fuel tax fund total budget next year two million uh, down 14.7 or 345 thousand again these funds are restricted for use on uh, street resurfacing um, also included in here not next year, prior years, is some Rebuild Illinois, which is the Illinois Capital Plan funding that is was built up that we will be spending next year. And then we, we still get uh, high growth funding, which is based on po where your population moves, you get a little extra. Um, it's not significant, it's like 25,000 a year, but we still get, we still do get a little bit of money for that. Again, all restricted to street resurfacing. With CPI moving where it's at, we're using this every year. Um, you know, when there wasn't much change year over year, we could delay it a year and save on, save some staff time on paperwork, but year over year now being five, seven percent in difference, it makes sense to spend it as soon as you can. Uh, impact fee fund, again, this, this fund really only probably has another year to go before, before it's drained. Um, this was impact fees from, from new development that had accrued over time. We have been slowly uh, pulling money out of it to offset stormwater management sidewalk programs in the capital uh, in the capital plan uh, doing the same thing this year 150,000 moving uh, to the capital improvement fund um, at the end of the year we'll only have 268,000 in there so I guess it would probably be one at the most two more years before we can close this fund 
Um, PD restricted revenue fund, Chief Smith talked a lot about uh, what's in here, uh, 326,000 total. Um, this is another one where, where we'll have an adjustment for the final budget that I'll touch on. Um, but 326,000 total, that's up almost 100,000. Uh, he talked about the K-9 vehicles, partially grant funded, um, unmarked vehicles, duty weapons, plate carriers, um, K-9 training and supplies, and then the adjustment that I'll have to make for the final is just adding the flat cameras in there. That was just an oversight. We got our signals crossed on who was entering what when we were doing the budget. So um, I will make that adjustment and point it out when we get to the final, final approval. Capital Improvement Fund, uh, obviously this is the majority of our, majority of our non-water and sewer capital plan, 9.6 million total, down 5.4 from last year. Uh, that, that's largely due to the debt service for Fire Station 3 was paid out of here last year. Biggest uh, revenue source is home, the 50% of the home rural sales tax, um, the debt service we paid off last year. Um, and then in, included in this fund from the capital program is the transportation system, 5.9. Uh, stormwater management, 300,000. We transfer vehicles and equipment out of here for uh, police and public works. We transfer that to the Fleet Services Fund. Um, technology, 818,000 in here. Um, buildings, 1.1, the big one there is the Village Hall HVAC. That's, that's coming up this year. That's a two-year uh, two plan for that one, but that's the big thing in buildings this year. Golf Course Fund. Really just a placeholder here for anything that might have to be done on the clubhouse, 25,000, cut it in half from last year. Um, three years ago, maybe four years ago now, we started to uh, put the amusement tax generated at the course back into this fund. Um, that's gonna pay dividends when we start the irrigation system talk uh, probably next year or the year after. Uh, that's one of the big ticket items that's gonna come due here pretty soon. Um, so that conversation is, is forthcoming, but at the end of next year, it looks like we'll have about 370,000 in here from that amusement tax uh, accruing in there. So um, we'll have that as part of that discussion. And then just to note that the Golf Visions contract, the operator of the course was extended through November of 2028 recently. Uh, the water and sewer fund, we have both operating and capital discussed here. So 2022-23 uh, results, we were under budget by 13.9% or 1.7 million. Um, the big thing here that we're excited about is the meter reader changeout program or what I refer to as the Orion changeout program. So if you recall during 2020, um, there was a chip shortage, right? So we didn't get any of our devices pretty much on time when we ordered them. So they all came late. We got a few in before the end of last fiscal year and we got the delivery, the rest of the delivery and then this year's delivery all installed in the one year. So we're pretty excited about that. That gets us over 50% installed essentially in one year. Um, for other projects that were done this past year in engineering that used some of these funds, there was the Lawrence water main replacement, the new water main connection that went underneath Route 21, the sanitary sewer televising for Lawrence, Waveland, and some areas in uh, Stonebrook. Um, we also had some water and sewer extension that took place over on Juniper. This past year, as I mentioned kind of earlier, right, so there was four people that got hired in utility. Um, so in addition to the three people that were hired the year before, that makes seven out of 10 new maintenance workers in the utility division. Um, so one of the things we did, which we hadn't done in the past, was we posted to hire people with experience. So typically we're civil service, right, driven. So we hire people with no experience into public works, but for this, uh, one time we hired two individuals, got really good talent, and so now we're able to train up some of those newer people with people that know about utility installations. Let's see, for next year, um, like I said earlier, we're looking for that part-time uh, utility locator. I wanna keep them on staff year round because I feel like if you don't know, if you learn where our utilities are just for the summer and then a different person comes back next year, we're not gonna know where our utilities are and so we don't, we lose the benefit of having the position filled. Um, so I think that'll be a good thing for our department. It'll help offset some staff because in the summertime, there could be two people full day, all day utility tickets um, and they could be doing more productive utility work. We also have, um, they could will offset the surge, they'll stay on target, they'll be vested, they'll be able to, in the winter months, then try and find um, locations that were off, right? So say they were out doing a locate and they noticed something was in the wrong spot, then they can come back in the winter and update GIS and things like that. So it'll be full circle, helpful, not only to people in the office, but also those calling in tickets. 
uh, water usage trends. So that was a big change this year. Over the last decade, water use has been going down considerably, right? Because uh, low flow toilets, high efficiency, everything, and people just being more concerned about their water consumption. Um, but this year, for what you know, was, is much higher. So I was talking to Brett about it, who's our utility supervisor, and kind of tried to figure out what's the reason for this large jump. It's the, large, the highest it's been in, I think, the last 10 years, if I remember correctly. So there's a couple things. Uh, we're rebounding from COVID. There's new businesses in town that are probably using a lot more water than um, in the years past. But we also can't negate the fact that we found a very large water main break this year that um, was flowing into storm sewer. So it's something that wasn't captured by bills or things like that, but it was captured when um, the Jawa bill would come out, right? So we knew that our we were trending high and we go out looking for where is it? Um, it took a bit of time, but we found it. So we think a lot of it might be that. Um, other things we have, uh, you talked about the moderate rate increase this year. So the three and a half percent, we have the Orion changeout program continuing. Like I said, we're going to buy all the remaining Orions and then install them as soon as we get them. Hopefully that'll offset any um, future supply chain issues if they pop up. Uh, we also continue to pay down the IEPA loan debt and have a very robust capital plan again this coming year. Any questions on water sewer? Seeing none, thank you. Uh, health insurance, health insurance fund uh, total here five point four million. Uh, that's up one point one. Some of that is how we accounted for. We had talked on in the, in the individual meetings talked about how we had accounted for the employee portion of it. Uh, last year, we used it to offset the expenditure. Now we actually are budgeting for it as a separate revenue, so it makes it look a little, little different. Uh, different. Um, proposed transfer that we had talked about of the FY22 general fund surplus. Uh, again, in this, this fiscal year, we expect this fund to finish underwater. Proposing a $500,000 transfer from the, the general fund to keep this, this fund afloat. Again, it, it would be something that we would have to reserve general funds for anyway. Um, to, to make sure the fund isn't negative. So um, it's really just moving it to a, to a separate fund. Um, the idea of this was to centralize health and wellness, um, increase wellness. Uh, initiatives in here once it built up a balance. That didn't happen, happen this year. Um, and it also provides a layer for the general fund for a volatile e expenditure. Um, that transfer of 500,000 will actually did go a long way to providing that layer that we knew would build up over time. We just didn't think it would be negative in the first year. Um, funding for this is uh, per full-time position back to the department. So uh, when, when we saw um, David talk about their health insurance piece going up with the move of Jody, that's that's how this uh, how this fund gets funded from back to the departments. Next, so in 23, fiscal year 23, we ended up over budget by $90,000, largely attributed to fuel costs uh, for this past year. It's been a real state of catch up when it comes to vehicles. Um, we try to find and order them. There's certain people that can't, that don't have them. So um, it was a bit of a struggle. Uh, we did, we were able to procure or at least track down three Tahoes in Iowa. So that worked out pretty well in order to help fulfill the four squads that we were looking for. Um, so to date, we have those three. We have a Ford Explorer that actually we took possession of. We have two police vehicles, uh, the CSOs that were purchased, upfitted, and are in service. So that's the big success story for this year. Um, we might have some difficulty with upfitting, though. So it sounds like not only are parts taking a long time to get to our upfitter, but also staffing. Um, so mechanics are in a shortage. You lose a mechanic, you lose a lot of productivity. So uh, we'll see how that impacts us going forward. Additionally, we received three detective vehicles, and the fourth should be coming this month, so that'll be good. Um, and then for heavy equipment, we're really grateful at Public Works. This past year has been amazing. We received a loader, a combination machine, a Mini-X, and a sniper jetter, and they're all in operation and make the guy's life easier every day. So thank you for that. For next year, um, the experience that we've had with respect to things taking longer and being more expensive had led us to be more conservative in our budgeting in the fleet services fund. So getting parts has been difficult, so we've increased the budget for that. Uh, we've, in order to try and minimize downtime for vehicles, we'll have more stuff on the shelf. Um, that's not, doesn't always play out as well as you'd like, because you go to order two and they say, well, we can only give you one, and it'll be in six months. So we're, we're doing our best to do that. In auto and truck maintenance, though, we've accounted for increase in budget there due to rising costs of the outsourced repairs 
So when we go out to any local shop that we work with, um, it's just costing a lot more. So we're trying to budget accordingly. Building maintenance, as I mentioned earlier, that's a three-way split in public work, so everybody's goes up equally. Uh, that's HVAC, overhead garage door motors, et cetera. And then the item here, 45 UST insurance, that's for our underground storage tanks for our fuels. So we have two tanks underground, and those uh, both supply diesel fuel and unleaded to the, anybody that comes to the fuel island. And they are 30 years old, so they're costing more to insure nowadays. Uh, for more entities are using the fuel island. I know we talked previously about the different high schools, park districts, so everybody uses the fuel island, and so we've ordered a lot more fuel um, in this past year than we have previously. Uh, the, we get deliveries probably once every two weeks now, or make an order once every two weeks. Other increases in budget, uh, what's accounted for here? We have capital vehicles and equipment, so purchasing vehicles and trucks. Um, like I said, it's gonna continue to be a challenge, but we're gonna work through it the best we can to get to get our fleet up to speed um, in due time. We maintain communication with our vendors, which is great, except that they don't always have good information or any information to share. So when it comes to plow, plow trucks right now, I can't even tell you when someone's gonna give me one, um, but we're doing our best. If you got any questions, let me know. Thank you, Heather. Uh, just a few funds left here. Uh, police pension fund, uh, 4.3 million total. That's up 534,000. Uh, Chief Kavanaugh and I get together and kind of put these budgets together based on who's going to retire and what, it, what what the retirement landscape looks like. Um, so we included this, included some of those in there. Investment consolidation. That process is complete now. Um, so we do do see actually a little little bit of savings in uh, those investment fees. Um, we talked about the. Uh, actuarial required contribution um, in the, on the police side, 1.5. We're proposing 2.7 over funding by 1.2 million again. We expect that ARC number to come up next year once, we, once the market losses start to come into play when they go to calculate that over a five-year average is, is how they do it. Um, so expect an increase next year, so it won't look this, this rosy forever, but um, it's still a significant overfunding of 1.2 million, and it shows in our funded ratio of almost 90%. So, uh, on the fire side, same process: 2.8 million total, 372,000 uh, increase. Uh, the investment consolidation, and here the arc is an overfunding of 621,000, and again that shows in the funded ratio of 85.2. Arc is calculated with the same assumptions for both of these, so we will see the same uh, increase because of the market losses that we saw uh, in next year's ARC when, it, when that is calculated by the actuary. Uh, last fund to talk about is the joint uh, ETSB or Northeast Lake County Consolidated ETSB. Uh, here this is both our 911 fund that Chris talked about and Zion's portion of, of the joint ETSB. So 1.8 million total, down 300,000. It's almost entirely uh, timing of capital and, and and supply or capital and radios and things like that. Um, talked about the Lake County Consortium, the CAD RMS project, Starcom. Chris touched on uh, maintenance of those and user fees being included here in here next year, assuming we get that we get that approved and get the go, get the go ahead. Um, Pro QA maintenance, a lot of maintenance for for software in here, um, and then those final um, changes that I need to make for the final budget on this side as well as the 121, so, or the 911 fund. Capital, just review quick. Um, capital plan, 17.2 million. Transportation system, 7.9. Gonna know from Nick today that prices came in good. We actually are going from five and a half to six resurface and, and a, a half a million reconstruction. Or half. Half a mile. Half a mile. Half mile of reconstruction, Half mile. six miles of resurfacing. That's exactly what I said. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Dilly's uh, pedestrian path and sidewalks included in there. Buildings and improvements, 1.4 million. Village Hall HVAC, Fire Station 1 that uh, Chief Kavanaugh talked about. Uh, Heather touched on the roofs and the material bins. Um, at the police department, the fire suppression and the HVAC, which is, is every year in, uh, in every year chasing that need. Um, water and sewer, 3.6. We got the Oplane water main. 
and the Hunt Club in Washington intersection on actually that's on both the, the streets and the water and sewer side. So vehicles and equipment, 2.2 million. Again, we touched on these three squads, three unmarked, two canines, uh, evidence tech vehicles. Some of that's coming from restricted funding and fire ambulance and two command vehicles, two plow trucks, a bucket truck, uh, pickup, a locate truck, a mobile lift and a floor machine and public works. Jump in if I left anything out, <laughs> anything out, I think I got them. Uh, on the technology side, 1.8 million. Director Velkover talked about incident response services and then uh, we see the 911 stuff in here as well. And then obviously village hall, hall, village hall audio and video. And then stormwater, just 300,000 there. Uh, I think that's televising primarily and spot repairs, but. So after that, it's just general fund fund balance policy and the senior discount. You want me to go into those quick? Yeah, you can. I mean, if they're both review, so yeah, sure. yeah just review. So um, we had talked about this a couple of times, uh, a change to our general fund fund balance policy, um, looking at changing it from the current, which is 35 years, 35% of the subsequent year expenditures to a range of 60 to 65%. Uh, if you look at the chart, the chart is 10 years of fund balance history. The green line is the 65%, red line is the 60%, and the black line is the current policy. So as you can see, we've held in fund balance significantly more than our policy. So really just trying to true the policy up to historical. Um, it also lines up with where similar AAA rated communities have their policy um, and allow staff to look at it from the standpoint of a upper and lower limit Anything above the upper limit, we can talk about transferring, using for capital, putting it to use, paying down debt, things like that. Anything below the limit, red lights flashing, we got to take action. So um, you can see the only year that we actually hit the lower limit was the COVID year, which we initiated the fiscal contingency plan and had those actions in place anyway. So it worked exactly how it was designed. Um, proposed next year transfer, like I said, four and a half million, two million to capital, two million to water and sewer, 500 to health insurance. The projected fiscal year 23 surplus would be about 3.8. Um, based on this and the timing of how this works, uh, we would wait until we know what the fiscal year 25 budget is going to be. We'll have at that point, we will have audited fiscal year 23 and we'll know what we need or what's over that 65% that we can do. So there'll be like a two year fiscal year lag um, between surplus and the 65 upper limit. So that, that policy was, was included in the red line version, was included in the proposed budget, and it'll be considered separately uh, on the, the budget public hearing night for approval with the financial policies. Any questions on that? I know we hit this a, a few times already. Uh, senior discount, I just wanted to review this um, prior to the formal approval of the budget. So, I don't know, uh, maybe six, eight months, a year ago, um, staff was asked to, to research a senior discount. Uh, we looked at eight communities. Uh, on average, it was about $133, or $133 a year. A um, couple different setups. Um, primarily, the negatives were the application process, the paperwork, and the overhead involved, um, the administrative overhead. So we got together and looked at how we could come up with a program that would eliminate that um, and be comparable to what, uh, what the other communities were doing. And so we looked at a setup where we would base our program or our eligibility on uh, whether they received the senior homestead exemption. That would eliminate the application process because we can get that data directly from Lake County. So we could automatically put it in our system if they qualify for that Lake County exemption on their property tax bill, they'll get the senior discount, don't have to come in and apply. So it eliminates all that paperwork kind of overhead I won't say nightmare, but I guess it could could be at some point. Um, but so it eliminates that process. Got to be single meter dwelling, um, and come once we we got data from uh, tax year 2021. Turns out 1,750 accounts would be eligible, or about 18 percent. So with that in mind, we put together what the proposed program or what it would look like. Data-wise, average of those 1,750 accounts use 8.7 thousand gallons every other month. So we put together 
scenario where it would be the first 7,000 gallons of usage would be at Jawa cost, so straight cost. Uh, no, nothing, the village wouldn't, wouldn't receive anything on the first 7,000 gallons for infrastructure and things like that. It would be just the, just the, the cost to purchase the water from Jawa. That would be about a 67% discount, 66% discount on the first 7,000 gallons. Based on, again, 2021 usage, it would be about, you get an annual max benefit of 146. Remember the average of the eight communities we surveyed was 133. Um, the total maximum exposure that the village would take on would be about 250,000. Based on 2020, 2021 usage, it would be about 200,000. So average annual discount, again, based on that usage, about 117. 31% of those 1,750 eligible accounts would max out the benefit. So about a third would get the max benefit out of the program. Again, based on 2021 data. So just wanted to review that again, kind of how that whole approval process would work. Uh, on the 10th, we'll have the public hearing, and then on the agenda will be the consideration of the annual budget, the comprehensive fee schedule, two separate, two separate agenda items, fee schedule would include the water and sewer rate increase of three and a half percent and the senior discount. So we put in the fee schedule the senior discount for 7,000 gallons. So that's how that would that's how that would get approved. Separate agenda item for the surplus funds transfer, two million to capital, two million water sewer, 500,000 to health insurance. And then another separate item for amending the financial policies to put into place the 60 to 65 percent general fund fund balance policy change. So four different items, I guess, to consider and put all that into, get all that together and get it into for approval. Questions? Trustee Ross? On the senior citizens, <coughs> will it show up on their bill then? It will. Uh, actually, that red box on that is a utility bill and what it would, what it would look like. So you can see inside the red box, it says senior discount and then a negative. So they will see it on their water bill. Other questions? <clears throat> no, just uh, thank you very much. I just appreciate your dedication. This is one of my favorite times of the year where I just am very thankful for each of you. Uh, you make a difference too, uh, makes it easy <clears throat> on us, uh, for the board, and uh, the residents uh, should be eternally grateful for all the things you guys do behind the scenes because they just don't know how good they have it. So thanks. That's what I was going to say. Including you. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> so no, I mean, the uh, mayor sat in on a couple extra uh, budget meetings this year. You see how the process runs, and I think he saw how serious staff takes it. Um, they come in and ask what's needed for. They don't come in with a huge wish list of just inappropriate asks. Uh, so, again, thank you to staff for that. Um, the board's had the budget for a couple weeks. I know we went through a lot of information tonight in a short period of time, um, but the trustees have it. Uh, we had the one-on-ones. It's online uh, for the public. So again, if things pop up um, as you look into the budget, reach out to us. Uh, based on the amount of questions tonight, it doesn't seem like we need um, a second budget hearing. Uh, but if something changes, we can schedule that uh, for March 20th. Um, otherwise, we'll set everything up for April 10th. Brian will do a quick run through at the beginning as far as what's changed, um, and then have it on the regular agenda for consideration. And then the fiscal year starts May 1. So, so with that being said, we right. So is there a motion to adjourn? So. so Motion by Trustee O'Brien, second by Trustee Ross. All in favor say aye. 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 Bridger. Back of seven. Wait.